This conference will now be recorded. Hey, Jill. Hi. Hello. How are you? How are you? Hi, Hi, Betty. Hi, Betty. Hi. Nice to see you. Oh, it's been quite a day. Has <laughs> it? We had water damage uh, in one of the bedrooms. It was the room that I use as my office. Oh, so, no. And I had, I don't know how many Zoom meetings today. <laughs> it was just <laughs> crazy trying to move all the furniture out. And oh, <laughs> how frustrating. Yeah. So. Somebody from a restoration company is coming tomorrow to take a look at it. Oh, that's good. What what leak did was it an outside leak or an inside leak? Uh, the gutter is frozen, backed up. Oh. So uh, we were able to get somebody to come and clean out the gutter and get all the ice out of it so that it wouldn't continue to flow in. But I don't know how long that's been happening i just noticed it today when the carpet was all wet so yes just one of those days <laughs> yes. hey charlie hi hey how's it going everyone hi hi charlie it's eileen riley hey. Hey, Charlie. Hey, Joe. Hi, Betty. Hi. Hi, Michael. Hi. Hi. Hi, Charlie. Hey, Michael's going. Good. Charlie. Hi. Hi there, it's Eileen. It would hey, help Eileen. me. If, it would help me if, when someone made a motion, they would identify themselves, since I can't see them and I might not recognize their voice. Okay, perfect. I'm, I'll, I'll make a mental note, an, an actual note, to uh, to give you the assist with with that for the meeting. Okay. For the Thank you. Thanks. Hi. Hi, Liz. Hi, Liz. Hi, Liz. <clears throat> Eileen, it's Liz. I I'm sorry, what? I said, hi, Eileen, it's Liz. Okay, I'm, I'm, ca I'm just here by telephone, so I can't see anybody. I understand. I'm going to keep track of who is signed in, and I'll send you the names. Oh, that would be good. I, I've, I've made a list of who I believe will be here, but I'm sure there will be other people that um, I did not get. Absolutely. Is Ann Burton there? Not yet. How about Dinah right. Farrington? She's usually here. Uh, yep, she just called in. Okay, Dinah, go oh, and put her down. I'm here. Is Lois there? Yep. Lois is too. Okay. Good. So, so is Tom Grant. Tom Grant. Okay. Hi, Tom. Hi, Tom. Yeah, we got a full Brady Bunch screen going right now. <laughs> uh, Ann Burton emailed me. She's not going to make it. Ann's not going to be here? Okay. How about Lynn? Is Lynn there? Mm -mm. 
No. Is I Lynn Albuquerque there? Joins, no, Lynn isn't here, but I think if anyone else joins from the board, it'll probably be Mary. Okay, okay. Mary's not there yet? Not yet. No. Okay. Just 6.30. Let me know if Mary gets there. Okay. And Brent and Allie, do you know? Who? Brent and Allie, the book sale co-chairs. No, okay, what are their names? Uh, his name is Brent. Well, their, their name is Brent and Allie Hill. And Allie Hill, are they both there? They're not here yet. I don't know if they're going to be because, Charlie, have you heard? I haven't heard from them yet. Um, she's due to have her baby. Like. Oh, okay. Well, okay. see if they get in there, if they come. <laughs> How about the um, Valentine raffle? How did that go? How much did we make? Good. Um, $304. Wow. And it only cost me 35 to put it together. Great. That's nice. Awesome. Yeah. Investment. Yeah. Do you, do you want to start, Charlie, or do you want to give it a minute? Um, I think we could start, right? I'd start. That makes sense. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to call the meeting to order. Um, I'm Charlie Pensabene, the president of the Friends. Uh, first, <laughs> first meeting uh, for me being the at the helm. So I want to thank everyone for for being here. Um, um, so uh, and then uh, just point, Liz for introductions. Do, do we go? What do you, do we go around? Or are we just because uh, we've kind of been running through the I names? Think, but I think everyone except Eileen yeah. can see each other. Yeah. Okay. So we could. Although we we've, we've got someone that's trying to sign in right now, I just don't know who it is. It's Lenovo. Lenovo. <laughs> <laughs> that's me. It's Linda Murphy. Oh hi, Linda. Oh, Linda oh, hey. Murphy. Okay. For some reason, our uh, my um, camera isn't working, but that's okay. I'm here. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Great. I have Charlie. Is Jill there? Yep. I'm yep. here. Yep. Jill. I've got Liz. Michael, Dinah, Lois, Tom Grant, Linda Murphy, and that's it. Is there anybody else there? Betty. Betty. Who else is there? Betty. Oh, Betty. I've got Betty Bellino. I got Betty. I do have Betty. Yep. You have no sound, Dinah? Then I'm going to put the um, the call in number in the in the chat for you in case you need it. See if this works, right? All right. So with that, I think we can move on to uh, secretary's report for the the minutes from the from the November meeting. Um, if anyone did, anyone have any comments or corrections for the for the minutes? No. All right. So, um, uh, is a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Right, yeah. Michael moved. That was Michael. 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 Okay. And a second. I'll second. Yes. Who's that? Liz. Liz, okay. All right, so it's approved. Oh, we, uh, we vote. Um, all in favor? Hi. Yeah. Anyone all right, opposed? All right, all. Oh, no, 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 yeah. Dinah, are you, did you call in to get sound? Yes, it's working. Yes. Okay, good. Right. Was, um, was, just, that phone, was that was that phone number in the email? Did I just miss that? Um, it's in the email. I think it's in the second. I think it's first is the login for the the internet browser, and then the second was the email. I missed that part. Okay. That's okay. 
Well, we can see and hear you now. That's good. Awesome. All right. So, uh, since the minutes are approved, we'll move on to uh, treasurer's report. Liz? Okay. Um, well, hopefully everyone got their copy um, from Charlie forwarding it. But as you can see, we're in a good place money wise. Um, the end of year appeal, um, I would say that this is a final total. We brought in $4,331. Great. Um, there's an additional $1,330 worth of donations. Um, that came in either through the library or just were mailed in without any designation. Um, and we've already had some people start to um, send in either their 2021 renewals ahead of time or uh, some people that just joined, because uh, obviously this goes back to uh, this report is as from the period of our last meeting, <clears throat> excuse me, November 17th, through, uh, well, yesterday, technically. Um, and then, I mean, like you asked, that latest raffle brought in um, $304. And um, I know I had uh, mentioned it to several people, but the um, grab and go book sale that we had back at the beginning of December had brought in um, $232. And then the um, last quarter of the donation uh, came in from Amazon for another $31.03. So that's uh, over, overall for the total of the year for Amazon, that's roughly somewhere between $120 and $130 that we got for not doing a thing, just putting it out there <laughs> to let people know. So we're in, I think, pretty good shape, and I believe Jill is going to be asking us for some of this money tonight. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions or? What is our total, Liz? What is uh, our total balance right now? Our current balance um, as of yesterday is uh, $23,754.72. The, um, the membership form is on the website. And Susan Bell just updated it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I just have to get back to her and tell her it's okay to put it up. Okay. But people, I think it's always there. So, mm -hmm. and it says that the membership um, time period is January through December. So yeah. I think people will just send it in even when we don't have our membership drive. Right, and that, that's actually something I was going to bring up under new business, the need to send out our annual uh, appeal for people to re-up their membership. So um, that number will obviously continue to grow, but um, <clears throat> this is where we are for right now. And a lot of them come in right through the um, library. You know, I, I get a good number of membership. Sorry, <clears throat> it's been a long day. Um, we had a, uh, you know, a good number of them just are people that fill them out when they're at the library still. Awesome. Uh, Thank you, Liz. Any other, any, oh. In the Treasury report, is there any uh, expenses? Oh, uh, yes. And actually, I was going to say, too, that the only expense that we've had between the last meeting and now was the cost to do the end of year mailing, which was um, $342.27. So okay. uh, I didn't do the math. I should have. But I mean, when you look at that compared to the reference in, very um, cost effective, I think. I do too. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And even in a year like this, when so many people had plenty of other things to do with their money, <laughs> yeah, right, right. I think we, I think we did amazing. Yeah, yeah. It really shows how much people care about the library. Yeah. So if if no one has any other things, um, I'll let Charlie ask for a motion to approve. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, and thank you, Liz. This is a yeah. awesome uh, graphic representation. Thank you for the work on that. Uh, anyone else have any uh, questions or comments on the? Treasurer's report. 
All right, hearing none, um, do I have a motion to move it? Betty. I'll move to accept it. <laughs> okay, so yeah. Betty, move to accept it. Betty, okay. I'll second it, Tom Grant. Tom, second. Tom, okay, thanks. All right, um, and I'm then, uh, any opposed? No. Right, hearing none, I think uh, that the report's adopted. Excellent. Awesome. Thanks, Liz. Sure. And then, all right, so um, next up, uh, book sale fundraising. I, it's my mistake. Uh, Liz pointed it out. Sorry for that, Liz. Um, I meant to update that to Ali and Brent. Uh, but if they're not here um, with, you know, no report on that, but I think, you know, just Bob, uh, Point, referring back up to the treasurer's report, I think you know the um, the um, the couple of sales in there for for income with uh, the grab and go sale. Um, as listed, I think it was you know pretty efficient, uh, pretty good, um, pretty good program to run. And I put in the the minutes for the potential for um, another one in the future. Yeah. Um, if anyone, yeah, if anyone's you know, I just put that out there in case. Anyone has strong feelings either way on it? No, I definitely um, think so because I know after it was over, um, the last time I did talk to them, they had gone in and made even more bundles up and had done some more sorting. And were also, as, as best I know, they have been in occasionally to, you know, shuffle around and refresh the shelves in the library as well. Um, but yeah, I, I haven't uh, spoken to them recently, which I kind of feel bad about. But um, the, uh, you know, definitely once, hopefully, not with this weather we're having, but maybe right. <laughs> uh, we can try another one. Awesome. Yeah. Are, are, we, yeah. are we accepting any books from people? Well, that, that's a good are we question. Accepting, are we accepting any book donations not yet um we need to i need to talk with i mean or charlie i sorry this is hard um no no, no. no. <laughs> um but i would say that charlie and i and brent now we need to chat and anyone else who wants to be part of that discussion about uh and probably drawing on jill's good expertise or whoever's in charge of their um quarantining process at the library that we would follow. I'm going to do that. You and Charlie and who else? Uh, me, Charlie, Brent, and Allie, the, the co-chairs. Allie, okay. Yep. And then, um, and like and I count said. Me in, count me in too, Liz. I'll be happy Liz, to that's absolutely that. great, um, you know, to talk together about, and thank you, Joe, also for setting Charlie and I up with our own um, go-to meeting things. We could use one of these to do that to uh, yeah. chat with all of us about that um, or else we can all stand in a big circle in the parking lot, you know, whichever. <laughs> um, but yes, I, I mean, to, to get back to your main question, we are not yet, but we do want to and we know that there is much uh, regular requests for that at the library and we want to, I think, make sure that we can meet that you know, read and um, and we stock ourselves because you know, in theory, we could be having certainly not a spring book sale, but possibly maybe something in the summer under a tent, or maybe even a fall one in the old format. You know, anybody got their shot yet? Yes. No. I, I have an appointment. <laughs> you have an appointment. Awesome. Who said yes? I, I lead. You got yours? Well, I'm 79 years old, lady. I'm not young like the rest of you. <laughs> I, my, I got the my, my daughter, my daughter-in-law, my daughter-in-law has had the whole set, both of them. Good. Because yeah. she, she, um, she's the, uh, a town official, the health, she, she works for public health for a town in Boston area. Oh, nice. good, good. I just got mine because I'm old. 
Oh. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I got the first one. I get the second one next week. Nice. Yeah, oh. I'm getting my second one, I think, in two weeks, right? Good. Oh, that is good news. Okay. Awesome. Anyways, back to the agenda. Sorry, Charlie. I also no, no, have no. A, <laughs> I also have all my uh, pandemic reading to donate to the book sale. <laughs> well, there's. I know there's a lot of people that have a built-up collection of books yeah. that they want to donate and and we do want to start taking them in but it's just a matter of coming up with a way so that it's not a flood first of all and, right, right. and that we're able to safely put them somewhere to, to not be touched and let them you know off it could do a limit on to how many books you can bring in in a right. week, like in one week, you can bring in 10 books. Right. Well, or I mean, the other thing too would be doing something like where, you know, maybe there would be like every, the, the first and the third Saturday of the month, we would be at the shed from 10 to 12 and you could bring, right. you know, Good. no more than a paper box size full, you know, a ream of paper or a case of printing paper, that size box, or roughly thereabouts, full, and we would take it and make sure that it wasn't, um, and we would have to take, um, I think we would probably, well, I don't know, we'd have to ask the library about whether or not we would need to take names for contact tracing or anything like that, or if it would just be a matter of taking the things, putting them aside, clearly labeled, do not touch for X number of days, weeks, whatever. And then well, probably doing a a Saturday from 10 to 12 would be easier to control than limiting the number of books a person can bring in. Well, that and plus the really don't, I mean, the library, because the library is only open for so much and they have, you know, they are also trying to be conscientious of the number of people that come into the building and such and that. So, if we could take that out of the equation to not have the people, I mean, they might still be there to go to the library, but, uh, you know, and typically on a Saturday, that's going to be offer the most availability for people not only to bring, but to staff it. We would and you could accept, people. and we could accept donations outside. Nobody has to go inside. Right, right, exactly. Yeah, they just have to bring right. to us and, mm -hmm. Yeah, I was thinking about the would, idea of like maybe, oh, go ahead, Michael. I would just open the shed, bring them to the shed. People can bring them in. You have tables or something set up with boxes. They just put them in and you don't touch them right. till the next week. Sounds yeah, good. that's. A, I was thinking something like that. Like even if we did, if we could, do, you know, logistically, if we did like an appointment system. So it brought down the number of people even in the parking lot or, you know, if we couldn't figure that out logistically, like I said, just a, a time frame and kind of set up, per, you know, loose parameters. And then I think it would, inside the shed, right? Do we do tables or yeah. do we do, I was thinking like taping off sections on the floor so people could, you know, you could send someone to the back row and then the next person in, they could go to the front row so they weren't, you know, in the same spot next to each other putting down the books. I think those are all, I think, awesome logistics yeah. um, that we can figure out. But I think it's so all, fast, it's like dropping off books that you're returning. So you just go exactly, in the shed yeah. one at a time, you put them in and show an area this is where this week's they're going and it, it there's a line a distance six feet yeah yeah you know yeah, yeah. and like last time when we had the grab and go book sale the library was kind enough to loan us some additional cones so we could make sure that people were safe from the cars that were traveling to use the drive up service as uh -huh. they're walking up to the shed because it's kind of a shared roadway there so We'll figure it out. We will. Definitely. We're smarter than we look. <laughs> <laughs> and we are all very smart looking, so that's awesome. <laughs> I'm loving the enthusiasm for everyone's um, engagement getting donations running again. Yeah. I, yeah, I think once we're, yeah. we're going to. I think if you wait too long, you're going to start losing them. Yep. That's a good point. So, yeah. So, yeah. Because of what Michael said about losing them, look in the chat. Should we pick some dates 
that we will tentatively start taking donations? Because, because guys, the more people get vaccinated, the safer the whole world is. Well, true, true, but there's what's still- the first, What's the first Saturday in March? Yeah, yeah. Do we want to do, I mean, do we want to do a, a, not that I want to elongate the process, do we want to do a go-to meeting that kind of hammer it out, or do we just want to- yeah. I mean, let's just set a date and see who will, you know, let's do the first Saturday in March. I'll volunteer. That, that's too soon. That's, yeah. that's too soon to get organized. How about, how about the second or third week in March? Um, I'm just looking at the calendar. I want to make sure. Um, when's Easter? Late. It's I, would an suggest, oh. I would suggest March 14 or March 21. Uh, those are Sundays, so no. I'm, I'm sorry. I meant the 13th or the 20th. 13th I'm sorry. The 13th or the yeah. 20th. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I mean, first day um, of spring. Donations. First day of spring. What is that? March 20th? Yep. Well, that's oh true. We could advertise it as like, Hey, I bet you're doing your spring cleaning and you might have some books you want to donate and we're finally ready to take them off your hands. Based on um, our, previous, our previous experience, anytime that we opened up donations, even if it was two weeks after the sale, there's a flood. I don't think we have to worry that much about promoting it aggressively. I think, you know, the maybe easing it out and letting smaller groups of people know about it and see how it goes i just we were over, always always overwhelmed with donations when in you know just after a very short period of time after the sale so yeah, i don't think we have to spend a lot of time on promoting it that's all how about oh, we okay, do it march 20th 10 to what do you think 10 to 1 i mean i can make that work for me I can, yeah. is that is are, that you, Liz? Yep. I can do it then too. Okay. I, I would suggest you might want to consider meeting ahead of time because and really plan it out because what's oh, yes. going to happen is yeah. you're going to be inundated with books, yeah. not going through the normal process of through the library sorting room. So yeah. when and how are you going to start setting them aside to sort them and all that kind of thing? Right. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, okay, when do you want to have the meeting? So March 20th would give us enough time to get that meeting out of the way and have some plans in place and still put out a gentle in invitation that specifically says you can only bring one box. You want to meet uh, the week before March 13th? Oh, you mean in person or to talk? To, to talk, to plan how we're going to, you know, fill the boxes, what we're going to do with them, how we're going to separate them, whatever. Or you, you could do like a subcommittee, you know, people who are interested could volunteer to do that pre-meeting and get it all planned out. Yeah, and we, and we could do a go-to meeting like this. Oh, well, yeah. I would do it well, at the shed. Oh, that's a, yeah, let's, that's a good point. We need to set the time up so that... We know when to go there. Yep. Um, well, if we met the week before at 10 a.m., we could do the, you know, get things set up like tables or marked off spaces or whatever, do some shuffling around so that the space is ready and we know what we're going to do the following week. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and I like Charlie's idea of setting up appointments. We could use Sign Up Genius to have people sign up for specific time frames so we don't have a you know a line over to to the y at uh, 10 o'clock <laughs> um, you know charlie is right you know what the book sales were like I mean, yeah people... and we don't we still have a, a rather even in in the shed we still have a rather tight space there's a lot of boxes in there there's still a lot of books that are unsold so 
you know, just so it's not quite so hectic. And then if we find out we really don't need appointments, I, I'm just thinking of um, the situations that we had and, and Jill knows it so well because she saw the disasters we had in the sort room where we had so many donations come in, we couldn't walk in that room. Right. We don't want that to happen. And, no. thanks, yeah. It, and then I, I guess, Linda, to your point, I mean, it's your earlier point, but um, I wonder, I, I think it's a, it's a point well taken on the, the maybe less is more with the advertisement. I wonder, just almost as like a kind of test run, um, yeah. do we do it just to, friend, like, maybe we use the friends distribution list, see if the friends, you know, how sure. many, if we get a big kind of response and then go from there and just see, you know, if we've gotten, you know, if it's oversubscribed for multiple weeks, you know, we could plan like that accordingly. And then, I mean, you know, maybe it's a side benefit for the friends really to say, all right, you get kind of the access to the, the book donation. Um, That's a good idea. Yeah. Right. Great. Right. That's a very good idea. Versus and I, first I, one, like the weekly newsletter or. I have a thought. Yeah, I mean, either like a news, like a, yeah, like an email blast or. I wonder if you would be, can you guys hear me or no? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, I wonder if you would be amenable yeah. to using one of our big bins. We have the big return bins and we could just put the bin out and then people could walk up and dump their stuff in and you could do it just for a few hours. And if you, you know, when the bin is done, we're sorry, we're done for the day. Maybe, maybe don't have such a long time frame. Um, for the first one, or we could have some backup bins and backup boxes that people could box their own things if they, if we don't have enough bins, they could box their own things and just give you the box. And then you could but take think... time to sort them. And then the other piece that I wanted to just suggest was that maybe it's not right at 10 o'clock because that's right when we open and that tends to be the busiest mm. time at the drive through oh. just for traffic wise, if we could do it at 11, that would be yeah. ideal. Sure. 11 to two. 11 to one. I, I, I agree yeah. with Jill that a, a shorter time frame for the first one is prudent. I mean, I think, I think you'll find that this could easily be a regular thing that will be much simpler than you think. Mm -hmm. No, it's just a, a new um, workflow that you have to work through. So maybe not spend so much time there. And afterwards you could work through how to sort because that would be probably the more challenging part. Yes. And it's probably a good idea to start with friends only because that's a group we can get in touch with easily. And it would limit the amount that we're going to get. Right. Yep. Yep. Awesome. Great. Well, these are good. Yeah. So, all right. This is this is great. I really appreciate everyone's enthusiasm for for brainstorming some ideas. So, are we going to meet on the thirteenth at eleven o'clock? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then the following week, March twentieth, from eleven to one. Okay. And yes, Jill, if you if you have a bin that we can borrow, and then we'll so, so if, if people want their box back, they can dump it, or they and can just hand, hand us their box, and we'll put a label on it. We can make up some labels ahead of time that say quarantined until. How long do you typically quarantine a book? A week? No. Four days. Four days. Four days. Four days. Okay. Well, Eight hours now. Okay. What are we going to do about sending a notice out for friends only? How Charlie and I can do that through the sign up. Genius. Yeah, so we could. Linda, we could uh, draw on your experience there. Okay, Charlie and Liz will uh, send out an email. Mm -hmm. Okay, sounds good. Awesome. All right, so. Um... Uh, looking at the clock, let's move on to uh, membership database report. Um, 
uh, I think, you know, uh, Liz, you mentioned earlier the um, the new business for the um, the membership renewal, but um, yeah, I don't have anything else to add. I guess we could, you know, hammer out figuring out the um, the 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 membership mailer. Yes. Um, if you want to do, we could do that. Yep. All right, and then I think that that's really it for that. Um, unless anyone has anything else that they can think of for that. Remember, this is the membership renewal. They're going to. When is that going to go out? I'm, I'm going to. Um, yeah. After the meeting is over, I'm going to send last year's draft to Charlie so he can, quote, make it his own and then um, work with him to get that over to our friends at Nielsen Associates who do all of our mailings and such. Um, so between the two of us, we should be able to get that out and hopefully by the end of the week, we'll get it out to them and then they'll do it. So probably people will start seeing in their mailboxes the first week of March. Okay. Sounds good. Awesome. Thanks. All right. Uh, public relations. Um, there's not really much going on. <laughs> um, Susan took a look at the website and uh, updated a few things. I'm going to look at it and try to make it more generic, which is part of what she did. Um, you know, because it still talks about the book sales and we have them, you know, twice a year and, and that kind of stuff. And I think we should probably just put all that aside for a couple months and say what's really going on, which is no sales for a while. Um, well, the, but the in, the in library sales that, you know, right. the friends books are still available for purchase there and that we are hoping to have another grab and go in the spring. Okay. So. So we'll be eliminating the big book sale and, and focusing on grab and go. Yeah, because until we see how things go, it's just, it's hard to say whether, I mean, I, I think it's hard to say whether we would have try to have something either in a tent in the summer or if we would just wait more and focus our energies on possibly having it in the fall. And that's what it could say. Something about we're working on possibilities for a major book sale. In the meantime, we'll do grab and grab and go sales. Mm -hmm. How about that? Yep. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Good. Awesome. All right. All right. Uh, Lois, if there's nothing else, uh, advocacy, uh, Anne's not here. Um, but uh, so we'll move on to um, Jillford Library Report. Unmute. Jill. Are you muted, Jill? There she is. Okay. Can you guys see my screen? I'm going to walk you through something. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to walk you through, um, quickly, I'm going to walk you through an overview of the grant expenditures. Um, that, an overview of what? The grant expenditures that you oh, okay. generously supported library, library grants. Um, grants that we have remaining funds for. Um, I'm going to walk you through what was spent last year and what we still have remaining. And then I would like, um, because last year had, it was so different than we anticipated. Um, our priorities for 2020 really shifted. And we had asked for um, a significant number of grants in February of 2020 and then COVID hit in March. So I have um, essentially a, a list of remaining funds that I would like to reallocate towards different things for this year. Um, so I will, I'll walk you through that, what that is. And I actually don't have a request for additional funds right now. I just have a, a, re a request to reallocate some of the funds that you've already given us. Oh, okay. Okay. So um, the first, uh, 
the first area is staff development grants. You had given us two grants, one in 2017 and one in 2019, and those totaled 4,300. We have um, spent $2,530 and we have a remaining $1,770. And what we'd like to do with those funds, um, we're not doing, um, there's, there's no travel this year. There's no, you know, a lot of the staff development. We, we actually did a lot of staff development um, with during COVID, which was great, but it was all remote and a lot of webinars and, and a lot of really inexpensive things. So we, we have actually saved quite a bit of money on staff development. And because we can't do our annual staff development day, um, I thought if we could use the remaining funds towards fleeces for the East Greenbush Library fleeces for our staff, our CERC staff that work at the drive through window, and then any, just use whatever leftover money for just any staff morale boosting endeavors for 2021, um, that would be probably the, the best thing we could do right now is just let our staff know that we appreciate them. And um, so, that's a request for for that. Um, then I have um, J Pop, our J Pop collection, which is a popular collection for youth. Um, in 2018 and in 2020, you um, generously gave us a total of nine thousand five hundred dollars. We spent four thousand six hundred and forty three dollars, and so there is a remainder remaining. Four thousand eight hundred and fifty-seven dollars, which which I'd like to use this year for the J-pop collection. It's still a very popular collection. Um, I just like to use it now. We have technology grant um, was received last year for nine hundred dollars. We spent four hundred and thirteen dollars. So the remaining funds, um, it's four hundred and eighty-seven dollars, and we would like to spend that again this year. For the technology collection. Get what? We'd like to just carry it forward for the same thing, the technology books collection. Okay. So by technology books, you don't mean like online book services, you mean books about technology. Yeah, our computer books and all, okay. you know, our, our yeah. books for dummies, those kinds of books. Yeah. <laughs> My um, so we have, um, a, we, there's a um, graphic novel and video games. You gave us two for adult services. You gave us two grants, February of 2019 and 20 for $1,700. We've spent just about all of that. Um, there's a remaining $21.75 and we're just gonna add that um, this year to our graphic novel collection. Um, but at this point, I'm not asking for any additional funds, maybe later on in the year, depend, we might come back to you for that collection, but for right now, we're just going to um, use our regular uh, materials budget to supplement the graphic novels collection. Okay. The last time we asked for a grant for Hot Off the Press was in, was in February of 2019. We spent... Um, we spent um, $1,117 and there's a remaining $183. Um, that collection actually is a very popular collection. You'll you'll remember that this is the collection that's just available for East Greenbush, Skodak residents and Friends members. And this is where you get a lot of Friends memberships from. Um, so we'd like to request an additional $2,000. This is also something that's not included in our regular budget because it's a service that's limited. Um, so this is a service that's 100% funded through the Friends and um, the additional $2,000 would be a reallocation of unspent grant funds and I'll show you where that's, where my proposal, where it's coming from in a, um, shortly. Large print books, um, $2,200. We did not spend that money because we had money in our collection last year for large print, but we will definitely need that this year. 
Um, yes, please. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, the stories to go um, kits. So this is these are the kits in the children's room. They're bags full of books and and puzzles and toys and um, all sorts of developmental goodies that they're thematic. We had started replacing them. This was a um, this was a program that you guys began probably a, around 12 years ago. You funded it, and in 2019, we asked for a grant to um, revitalize this collection, and we have spent $751, but we still have a remaining $1,749. Um, that co that collection actually is sort of on hold right now because um, of all of the manipulatives. It, they're in the playroom right now. It is something that we are we are discussing adding our library of things collection and our our stories to go kits back into the circulating collection. So I'm not ready to give that um, money up yet because once we start linking those, they really need to be replaced. So. So staff are actually working on replacing those now. Um, the Library of Things collection, same thing. We we received a grant last year for $2,400. And that's a collection that's 100% um, funded through the friends. And we didn't add anything new last year um, from this. We had a little bit of money left over um, from something else that we spent but we really stopped ordering everything in February for Library of Things. So I'd like to um, keep that money in there because we're looking at that collection a little bit differently and um, that will be very valuable as people are doing more and more things from home. Um, for instance, the snowshoes that we um, have, we have a collection of snowshoes. We've been lending those and they've been hugely wildly successful. Um, so we'd love to add more things like that to the collection. Museum passes, um, you gave us uh, $3,500. We spent less than that because not all of the museums were open um, last year. So we still have a, a remaining $1,000 that we'd like to allocate towards the 2021 Museum Cast past collection. At some point, I may come back to you for additional funds, but right now museums are um, not all of the museums are open, so that money is okay for right now. Uh, periodicals, we have uh, $2,486 remaining that we'd like to use for the 2021 periodicals um, collection. This is another collection that last year we had to cut Significantly, we spent a lot less than we had anticipated um, because um, it was not a it wasn't a collection. You know, people weren't coming in and borrowing newspapers while we were closed. We stopped ordering certain things, and um, so now that we're open to the public, we we are ordering our um, newspapers and our magazines again. But this is also another collection. The print is kind of dwindling um, with how much is even available in print and a lot more is digital. So that um, I may come back to you for additional funds, but right now it's $2,485 left and we'd like to just carry it over for this year. Hoopla, um, you generously gave us $3,000. We spent all $3,000. Um, last year, we'd like to request an additional $2,000 for this year. Again, from unspent funds, I will show you where that is coming from, potentially coming from in a minute. Um, this is also something that is funded through the library's materials budget as well. So that would this would help um, supplement that. We have um, an adult summer and winter reading challenge money and there's $207 left that we'd like to continue to use this year for reading programs. Um, the music series is $2,000. We did not spend any of it last year, but it looks like summer programming, outdoor summer programming is something we're actively planning for this year. So we'd like to keep that money if that's okay to use. Um, 
that we did not um you we we received a grant from you actually two years ago in february of 2019 for the farmers market for two thousand dollars um to increase the marketing for the market what ended up happening was our part through our partnership with the y they took on um a fair number of costs that they had not originally been taking on as a partner so we have a savings there and we never spent that money and i don't anticipate that we'll need to spend that money at this point in time um so what i'd like to do is take that two thousand dollars and allocate it towards the hot off the press collection um same thing with film festival money we have 278 dollars remaining that i'd like to use towards hoopla um, i don't see the film festival coming anytime soon we've got um adult program supplies there's 767 dollars but we'll continue to use that this year for programming even though we're not doing in-person programming right now a lot of the virtual some of the virtual programming actually costs money, but a lot of what's happening is we're putting together these kits for both youth and adults, and they're um, wildly popular. Um, I'll just give you an idea. Last month in January, we um, distributed 608 activity kits through our drive through window. Um, so the money for programs for adult and youth will be well, well, used um putting together these activity kits we can't actually keep up with the demand right now oh. we have jill, some what is the jill you mentioned the film festival money what is that yep. going to be used for hoopla what do you want to use that for hoopla what's hoopla that's our that's our um digital tv essentially oh, okay that's okay go ahead I'm happy. Movies, TV, books, yeah. Um, we have just about $700 left in fish tank maintenance grants. Um, and that is not actually going to be program supplies. That's going to be fish tank. We're going to continue to use that for fish tank. We need that. Uh, there's a $2,500 children's festival grant. As you know, we did not have the festival book sale um i would like to use that money if you are um, willing for youth services programming this year um we did have a cut in our programming line from our from our regular budget line and um i i i don't anticipate with this with that money and um the youth services um summer reading money left over I don't, there's 4,000 left over from summer reading. I don't think that we'll have to come back to you for more youth services money this year. Okay. Um, so if if we can carry over the summer reading 4,000 and the ch children's festival 2,500, that should get us through this year with youth services programming. And then we have, I promise I'm almost done. Then we have- I was gonna say, if it came up that we able were able to have a children's festival then we would just do another grant i mean that exactly exactly yeah. yeah so and then we have technology um the digital signage grant that actually came in under budget um and there's 437 dollars left in the digital signage grant what i would i'm wondering if you'd be amenable to us using those remaining funds for um part of our we have the, a new york state grant um that we have received and it's a rather large project and we are updating um quite a number of things in our meeting room so technology upgrades and and this would be just a, a minor um but it would certainly be well used because we do need to match that and it would be valuable for us to use it in that way. So I was wondering if you would be okay if we did that. Um, and then the last piece or the last grant that we never used was a passport. We had at one point in time presented um, a 
uh, becoming a passport agency to you. And that was something that we received a generous $1,350 grant from you. Um, but then after working with uh, the services committee on the board, we decided that we were not actually going to um, look at that program that year. And then last year it was completely off the table with COVID. And at this point, I don't anticipate that being something that we would allocate resources to right now. So I am hoping that we could use um, that additional 1,350 to transfer towards Hoopla. So that essentially leaves $3,620.17 and that it, those are unspent programs no longer needed. So that's the passport program, the um, film festival, and the farmer's market. And what I'd like to request is that we could split that up between 2000 for hot off the press and $1,628 for Hoopla. Um, I know so, that we do that. Huh? I know that we do all of the changes you presented. <laughs> anyone? Uh, anyone second? I would. Uh, I would second that. Dinah would second that. This is very awesome. nicely rearranged. Yeah. Who was the first? Yeah. Who Who made the motion? Liz. Liz. <laughs> Liz. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Thank you, Joe. This looks. This is awesome. <laughs> You're welcome. I'm going to send this to you, Charlie, so you have it for your records, okay? Oh, perfect. Thank you. You and Eileen. Went up and the test. Okay. Right. You, can, you can send it out if other people want it. Thank you very sure. much. Sure. Thank you. We greatly yeah. appreciate your continued support. And I'm hoping um, that we can, you know, you guys can continue to um, work through kind of re envisioning what the friends look like post or, you know, now through COVID. And then we can kind of use this year as a year to regroup and um, you know, I, we might come to you for additional funds later on in the year, but I'm going to um, try not to come to you with too much this year so that we can regroup and figure out how to um, raise some funds through the friends that would, you know, be similar to funds that we used to raise through the giant book sales for post COVID because um, once we're done with COVID, we will have all of the, all of the um, expenses expenditures that we had before will will be back and we will need you in full force. <laughs> sure. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Um, Thanks. And that, uh, sounds like no one, uh, no one opposed, right? <laughs> Just for the sake of Yep. All right. So with that, I think it carries. Awesome. And moving on to Michael for Board of Trustees. Okay, I'm going to be real quick because I have to leave in a minute or two to go to the next meeting. Um, the uh, I only have a couple things. One is, uh, three things. One is, at the last meeting, I reported that Skodak was not going to pay our full amount. Uh, we continue, after I mentioned that here, and I think there were some Skodak people here, I don't know if they did anything, uh, but I sent one more strong letter to the town and got a response that they were going to pay us the full amount. So we are getting the full amount from Skodak for 2021. And if anybody did anything other than me, I thank them for it. Uh, number two is on the and advocacy, um, the friends normally get involved in Adv advocacy day at the state. Uh, at our Upper Hudson meeting last week, um, they're setting this up. Advocacy day is going to be virtual this year, um, and it's going to be a little bit more controlled, uh, but they are going setting up meetings with all the appropriate people that they have normally set up meetings with except they're going to limit people and do things like that. I would suggest if anybody's really interested in it, uh, contact Jill, because she's also an Upper Hudson board member, more involved there than I am and available. And uh, 
to get the name in so that maybe you can be a representative at one or two of the meetings. Um, and the third thing I want to report is that um, uh, the trustees, uh, it's the beginning of the year, we had one of our two elected trustees um, had to drop out because he moved slightly out of town by a house or two. Um, and so we have an opening on the trustee board. Uh, we advertised to fill it. We have two candidates and the board is going to discuss them. We had interviews on Saturday. Board's gonna discuss them uh, tonight in executive session and hopefully we'll make a decision and add a trustee to our board on the next March meeting. That's all I got. Awesome, Great. thank you, Michael. All right, um, so then moving on just real quick. Uh, previous business, we put, I left in there amending the I'm bylaws. Oh, all right, perfect, thanks, Michael. Thank you, Michael. I put amending the bylaws. I think yeah, um, Liz, Liz and I were kind of just chatting with, with getting that updated. So that's kind of an ongoing project, and um, still have open leadership, open positions for the vice president, and right now for database managers, we try to kind of sort through the the new way to organize our, our our database. But those are open positions. So if anyone knows anyone who's interested in serving on the board. Um, you know, shoot those over to us and we can, we can uh, take a look. Um, I put, and if no one, else, nothing else for previous business, um, I put for new business, um, the sustainable shelves program. A few weeks ago, uh, Nyla ran a presentation on, it's a program that I forgot what, um, I don't know if it's Norton. It's one of the big, bigger publishing firms. Um, I think in North Carolina, they have a program basically where you, um, you use a an app to sort through books like I think for, you know for pandemic style. Uh, um, you basically scan them and they put the, basically the long and short of it they put them in two different pots. One is that they'll resell for you, and the other is that they'll uh, sustainably recycle. They'll pulp them down. Um, so and then it's so you box them up and kind of the two separate channels, and you mail the one box to the reseller. The um, the the pulping goes to another site. And they pulp those down and they sustainably recycle them. So it was just an it was just an option out there in case um, kind of before we picked up steam on the idea, the awesome ideas we talked about today for the um, the donations. But there is another kind of um, you know vector for workflow if we get overloaded or we you know things change or whatever. I think there's another option out there. Um, you know we can continue to kind of chat about it, work on it. If we don't have an outlet for books um, for the, the in-house sales or for the grab and goes, there's just another option out there. I know we talked about that in, in the past with other programs like um, like Better Earth or uh, Better World Books, but it's just another one that we you know we know they're sustainably recycled and they, they try to make it as easy as possible. Yeah. So that's out there. Um, we don't have to kind of spend a lot of time, but just, I took a webinar on it. So if any, you know, if you want to chat about it more, um, I think the or when I watch the webinar, I think it's still online. So it's just another option that's out there. Okay. Um, and then if any, if anyone else have anything for new business or can I move on? No. Um, okay. And then, yeah, I think we kind of chatted about the, the grab and go sale. Um, the interest in that. And then I just put on there also the, the April meeting uh, for, for the next friends meeting, just so everyone's aware of it. Um, I'll try to get now because Jill got us on the, the go-to platform. I'll try to get the meeting info out a little bit earlier and everything out to you a little earlier. Um, and then a uh, real quick member form, if anyone has anything else to bring up. Um, the next meeting is okay. April 20th, right, Charlie? Uh, yes. I believe. I think so, that, yeah. It's the third Tuesday. Third, third Tuesday, yep. Yeah, okay, just so that Eileen can add that into the minutes. Perfect. Yeah, I got it. Okay, thank you. Awesome. All right. So if uh, nothing else for member form, new ideas. Um, so well, we covered a lot of the oh. books and stuff. I just wanted to say I, I like the book sale in the library. I bought a number of, of books, not only for myself, but to share with other people. So I think that's a great idea to continue. Absolutely. That's not going away. 
<laughs> Thanks to that that how much have... money we made from the raffle. <laughs> well, I mean, serious, uh, both almost equally. In the, from November, the last raffle was 304, but from November, the middle of November to the middle of February, we made 312 from in, in, in library sales and money people put in the little jug that sits there that says, make a donation. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Um, I don't have anything else for the meeting. Charlie, I was going to do what you wanted to do about board of, uh, the board meeting coverage. Oh, yeah, I was going to I was going to plan to attend. You're so. going to? Okay, well, I, I would be willing to divvy those up with you so we can talk about that another time. Yep. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And we will go, Jill, we are wrapping yep. and off we go <laughs> to the board meeting. Sounds good. Thanks. Thanks, good everyone. Oh, we need an adjourn. We need an adjourn. Motion to adjourn. We need a motion to adjourn. Motion. Liz. From no. Liz. I'll second it. Linda. And Linda seconds. Awesome. And who second? Linda. 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 Okay. Liz was first and made yes. a motion, and Linda second. Okay. Good. Yep. Okay. Thank you very much. All, All right. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.